that we live in what's called the information age. And it's true that in the palm of our hands, on smartphones, devices, we have access to more information than any previous generation of humans had access to. And yet, I don't sense that this is also an age of wisdom. In fact, I think the more information we have as a society, um, the less wisdom we have collectively and as individuals as a society. Uh, and why is that? W what's working against our wisdom? Well, I think there's at least three dynamics of the information age that's making it hard to be wise. One is that there's just too much information. It's impossible to sift through and to be discerning about good and bad sources of information because there's too much. Another is that it's too fast. The speed of information in the information age works against our wisdom. We need time and, and reflection and space to be wise, and the speed of things just doesn't allow for that. And then finally, information is oriented around the individual, and that works against our wisdom. Uh, our, our culture already has this idea of kind of look within yourself. You are the best source of, of truth. Trust yourself, follow your heart, and the algorithms now kind of feed into that by orienting every source of information around you as an individual. So that's not helpful for our wisdom. So what do we do about this? In this world where information is kind of actively making fools of us, how do we become wise? Well, I think that we start by kind of auditing our sources of information. Where are we looking? What voices are we listening to? And then we need to think about, okay, what are the sources we can trust? And where are the good, healthy, nourishing sources? And what are the bad sources? And that's where I came up with this idea of the wisdom pyramid. So it's kind of inspired by the food pyramid, which was for our physical health, knowing which food groups were good, which were bad, and kind of what proportions to have of each, of each category. Uh, I think we need something like that for our spiritual health in, in this age of information overload. What are the good sources? What are the bad sources? Uh, the bottom category is the Bible. So the most important category at the bottom, the foundational layer, is God's word, his direct speech to us. If he is the source, if he is the definition of wisdom, then it makes sense that his direct revelation to us in scripture should be the foundational layer of our wisdom pyramid. And then next up is, is the church. This is God's people. This is the body of Christ on earth. It should be an invaluable source of wisdom for us. And then we have nature. This is God's creation. Uh, scripture says, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God. Nature, God's creation should reveal things to us about the creator. And so if we pay attention, if we spend time outside instead of on our devices, uh, we can pick up a little wisdom there. And then books. This is kind of an obvious one. If you think about becoming wise, read books. Um, but I think especially older books, books that have stood the test of time, is important for our wisdom. And then beauty. Um, art, music, things that help calm us down, ref uh, force a little bit of reflection, attention, attentiveness, uh, that's really important for our wisdom. Wisdom is not just about facts, it's also about feelings and emotions and kind of that intangible level that beauty can provide. And then finally, at the top of the wisdom pyramid, which is the least important category, is the internet and social media. Um, it's not that there, that can never be a source of truth, but we need to be careful and we need to use it sparingly and not, a, not make it like a staple of our diet, which is part of the problem. I think we've flipped the pyramid in a lot of our lives so that the internet and social media does kind of occupy that base layer and it really needs to be in its proper place uh, at the top. So that's it, that's the wisdom pyramid. Um, you know, it's really just a guide um, to help us be discerning in our media habits in the things that are speaking into our hearts and minds. I think that uh, in this world today where wisdom is hard to come by, we need more wisdom. We need Christians of all people to be kind of growing in wisdom and not following the ways of the world uh, in, in going in these dangerous directions. So I hope the book is helpful uh, to that end, to just raise up a new generation that is, is mindful of what's speaking into them, what's forming them, and hopefully in the direction of wisdom.